I was the kid. I was writing games when I was, you know, 12, whatever. And uh, the other kids in the block would say, you know, I'm going to play quarterback for the Cowboys. And I'd be like, I'm going to make video games and everyone's going to play them. I'm like, you dork. Go back to the chess club. Who's laughing now? <laughs> yes, I was in the chess club. Ladies, gentlemen, and NBs alike, this is Todd Howard. Many might know him as a core member of Bethesda who's brought to you games like Fallout New Vegas or Skyrim, leader of the gaming industry, symbol of hope, creator of games, and holder of many titles. They say he saved a cat from a burning building once. I can't verify if that's true, but I can verify one thing. He's helped create some damn good games over the years. Re-released some old ones too. Several times. If there's anything I remember about Todd's games, though, is that each playthrough was never the same. Not because of the devs' excellent work, but because the games just don't work sometimes. Like, I don't remember that, Todd. What the heck, man? And, and what might this be, huh? What's going on with this one? Anyway, we're here to celebrate these broken happenings in games, not just by Todd, but by the whole entire gaming industry. You heard that right. Rumor has it we might even talk about when players use these glitches on purpose to beat games faster. That's right, speed running. Buckle up, because it's going to be a good one. So I was playing Dead Space 2 the other day and I came across a tiny little triggering glitch. I figured that I can show you better than I can tell you. Look at this. I was in a seemingly easy boss fight after Isaac found out some important info and then proceeded to dodge a military helicopter shooting at him. Isaac, by perfect coincidence, drops down into a hatch and then goes face to face with this abomination. All you have to do is shoot the glowy arm, right? Simple enough. <laughs> no. I died. Several times. Don't you kill me, you little bitch. Chat, shut the hell up. You're getting banned. Oh my god, Isaac. Isaac, don't die on me. Don't die on me, Isaac. Ezekiel! <laughs> no matter what I tried, I just kept dying and dying and dying. So I gathered myself and said, Yo, am I washed? Nah, couldn't be that. So I did what every other player does in League of Legends. I blamed the game. Now I'm gonna replay the part where I die and I want you to see where the thing happens. Watch. Did you see it? Well if you blinked then you probably missed it. But basically what's happening here is the gun that I'm using is the actual problem. Turns out that if you use a gun called a detonator too close to yourself, well, you blow up. And since the game only factors in the damage from the boss in this fight, you just end up falling over at the end of a sequence like canned ham. Also, this happened. Things like this happen all the time, though, and 95% of you have guaranteed experienced a glitch or two in your lifetime. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know this game had the most chaotic release, arguably, ever. I'm talking about legs and walls, disappearing people, random explosions. Pretty much your average day in North America. Cyberpunk was actually a good game despite what you may have heard. It was just the circumstances of timing, expectations, and crunching, I believe, that ultimately killed this game. I would make the bold argument that the wonkiness of it all made the experiences better. Don't believe me? I'd rather play a game where you don't know what's going to happen every time you boot it up than, uh, I don't know, Final Fantasy VII. Think about it. That's fine. What? F Final Fantasy VII has uh, terrible graphics. And, and I don't mean, like, I don't know, like, the story sucks, dude. <laughs> Super Knuckle, Knuckle, Bill Buckle, Banana, Truffle Head. <laughs> <laughs> story shmory. Who needs a story when your gameplay's top notch? Okay, I, I can't even read that one with a straight face. Oh my god. Memes aside, Cyberpunk gave me a solid three days worth of fun for what it's worth. I distinctly remember playing the game and my PC audibly gasping at the audacity I had to think I could run it on my potato wooden computer. 
There was no better feeling than being introduced to this whole new world of content, and so I hit the streets like millions of other people did on release night. Only to find that the devs were clearly fans of One Piece, and uh, I love that for them. Here, I wanted to see if the car was ready for the streets, or, or if the streets were ready for my car. Uh, yeah. See, now this one, this one freaked me out the most. Tea worshippers. Clearly fans of the tea virus, no doubt. But alas, everything was finally getting to normal again, and the game finally had a moment to show its brilliance. Well, to the untrained eye, this might look a little unprofessional, but to the cultured gamers out there, this... This is content. A game breaking right in front of your eyes is like seeing a typo in a book. It's not often that it happens, but when it does happen, it's like, wow, that was a quirky part of my unique experience. These instances of broken gameplay have pretty much existed since forever, I'd imagine. Things will sometimes slip through the cracks no matter how much devs try to perfect a game. Oh, oh, but but this one right here? This, this is my favorite. Watch this. Frick around and find out. It's 2008. You're unemployed, no girlfriend, no future, and one Saturday, you graze your dirty little Cheeto fingers across that Xbox 360 power button. And you hear these magical tones coming out of your slightly dusty TV. You instantly know that your day is going to be filled with duplicating watermelons until you crash the game, followed by pushing the adoring fan off of the highest mountain this side of the Mississippi. The content was never what the devs made, it's what the devs created by accident. Bethesda is one of those companies that somehow always has issues in their games, but the franchises are still loved. Things going wrong is basically a staple in the Elder Scrolls. I don't even mean that as like a quirky insult. I'd say Bethesda's pretty unique in that regard. After the first playthrough of Skyrim, you might not notice anything. After the 22nd playthrough of Skyrim, you start to notice that a couple of things weren't meant to be there. Since the dawn of video games, there's been two ways to play games. Casually and competitively. Now, if we're narrowing it down to competitive play, there are two ways of competing that have persisted throughout time. Annihilating your opponent or winning against yourself. That's world record, dude. Players will do anything to win. It's what drives people to do better, to be better. It was only a matter of time that people found new routes to the finish line. This leads us to the awesome implementation of glitches in speedruns. Let me show you some famous glitches that almost every speedrunner has seen that maybe you haven't. Alright, so uh, let's just see if I can, uh, maybe if I jump backwards, maybe it'll let me go up these stairs, I don't know. Let's just, uh, let's just give it a shot. Okay, I'm getting speed, oh, oh, oh! Well, that's one way to get it done. It'd be real funny if I could just uh, shield the bomb and then start flying, huh? What the? Oh, by mother of God. Oh. Hmm, how am I gonna get over this wall, huh? Well, if I can't go around it and I can't go above it, what if I just go through it? I should be able to. If I run. Mom, get the camera! Uh, Newton never told me about this law right here of gravity. Plus one for Link, zero for humans. Never underestimate speedrunners. They will go to any length just to save time. Walls have stopped being an issue for them. Cutscenes have zero effect on them. I truly fear the day speedrunners revolt and aim to take over the world. They jump a million feet in the air, they travel as fast as humanly possible, and they hate social events. I'm on my own side, Garby. That's a shame, man. You can never- Minutemen. 
Jesus. Anyway, speedrunning is awesome, and if it interests you in learning all this cool tech, I highly suggest finding a subreddit or Discord channel and learning from the best speedrunners in the game. It's actually really accessible, and if you see a game that you like, just go for it, man. Or not, I don't want to tell you how to live your life, I mean, to each their own, am I right? Uh, you know, dog bless. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's destined to take their own paths and stuff. Uh, but you could enjoy from the sidelines like I do. There's even an annual event called Games Done Quick, GDQ for short. It's my favorite charity event that had its humble beginnings as a sort of speedrun showcase. It went from being a couple of people in a storage closet, to being one of the most viewed events on Twitch every single year. I think this clip really sums it up well. Alright, Manka S. Oh, no. oh, of course he did, of course he did, of course he did. Oh, he Alright, may as well have some fun here. Oh my god, dude, dude, I can't believe this shit. <laughs> I am going down with a fight. GDQ is home to world records, PBs, and most importantly, a community that's super passionate about what they do. I remember stumbling upon it a couple years ago and seeing all these games get demolished in crazy fast times. Super cool tricks and an even more awesome group of people. GDQ helps fund Doctors Without Borders. It's a charity organization that helps people in need all over the world. No matter what anyone says about how cringe it can be or how cheesy it might be, when you can gather this many people for a good effort, it's always a beautiful thing. I can honestly say that it's the one event of the year that I anxiously look forward to. And if you ever have time to stop by during the next Games Done Quick, hopefully I can see you guys in chat. For those who want to know what the event is like, check the description for a link to my favorite GDQ run ever. While these might be just games or just glitches, by playing games fast we've been able to reach people and places we never would have thought. With that being said, thank you for watching and maybe we'll get a part 2? I also stream on Twitch pretty much as often as possible so if you're curious, swing on by and say what's up! Until next time.